FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. The protesters in the streets of Baltimore today after this uh, Ed Nero uh, decision. The police officer in Baltimore found not guilty uh, by a judge, mind you. Found guilty by, not guilty, I should say, by an African-American judge. So there were six officers who were charged, three white, three black. The first black officer, his trial ended in a hung jury. They're going to retry him. Second one up was Nero. He asked for a bench trial. Today, a judge found him not guilty on all three counts, or all four counts. I think they charged him with four counts. If, let me read this correctly. Yep. He was charged with four counts because there were two counts of um, simple assault, I think, or misconduct. So we've been taking phone calls on that, and it sort of tended to focus on the police officer's role in, and whether or not there are dirty police officers. My, You know, my that's our Twitter poll, but my argument is it's a very small percentage. That's my take. Our guest this hour, the one and only Peggy Hubbard. Peggy, how are you? Hey, good afternoon. Hey, thanks for giving us some time today. You know, I saw that you would, you'd posted on this Baltimore situation as well on Facebook there on Peggy's yes. Corner, which I would encourage people to check out because it's absolutely hilarious. Some of your rants leave me laughing. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you what, I, I enjoy reading your stuff. Um, what's your take on Baltimore? First of all, the, the DOJ... Department of Justice jumped the gun, came down on pressure on top of the city DA office. Now, the city DA is led by uh, a black female, African-American female. She took all the information and ran with it. Didn't do investigations like you're supposed to. She just went off of emotions and ran with it. She did not look at Gray's background. She did not take into account his criminal actions, his past. She didn't take into the account that he has been known to be combative with police officers when confronted by police officers. She didn't take any of that into account. She took it strictly based on a black male being abused or, or brutalized by police officers. I call it the Mike Brown effect, like here in St. Louis. It's the Mike Brown effect. If, you, if you're a white cop and you have a black subject, automatically you are, you are condemned, you are found guilty, you are a racist cop, and that is not the point. That is not the truth. The truth of the matter was this was a man who was not supposed to be out. This was a man who had a long criminal history. And I asked people, and I asked a lot of people on Facebook, how were these officers to know that he had an underlining condition? How were they to know? I mean, they're police officers, but they're not doctors. You're talking about Freddie Gray. Freddie Gray, right. 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 How were they to know he, was, he, he suffered some back injury prior to this? And my thing was, why was he even out if he was suffering from such a great back injury? Why was he out? I think the, I think. I'm sorry. That was my mistake. Go ahead. And why was he out? Why was he out doing what he was doing? And right. his 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 background is drugs. He sells drugs. He takes drugs. He's not a good guy. And instead of looking at the full picture, we just focused on black man, white officers, black man, police officers. We don't sit back and look at the full information that is given. We take bits and parts and pieces and we run with it. You told me when we talked last time that you grew up in North St. Louis, came from, didn't you tell me, a single mother household? Well, good fellow a neighborhood. I grew up in, in, in North St. Louis, went to City High School, went to Soldan. Uh, like I said, Mark, I got my, my makeup tips. From, from hookers going my way to school. I mean, that's, that's how bad it was. And my mother raised eight children. She had three boys and five girls. One, one brother was a bad guy. He was the worst of the worst. This was a kid that beat my grandmother over crack money. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Beat her into her life because 
she would not give him money for crack. And this boy has been in and out of prison. My mom did everything she was supposed to do as a mother. She gave us all the guidance. She was at every PTA meeting. She was at every sporting event for us. My mom was a hands-on mother, and you dare not cross her. You got dealt with. You cannot help the, the course somebody's life is going to take. And I don't take it as an excuse because I grew up in a, in a, in a poor neighborhood. I grew up in a single-family household that I'm going to turn to crime. No, that's not acceptable. No. It wasn't acceptable to her, and it's certainly not acceptable to me. And I have a child, a stepchild, that is in prison. I held him accountable. I knew the person he was. I was not going to let that boy hurt another person. He had to be dealt with. Peggy, why do you – so so obviously you came out of that neighborhood with a very different approach or attitude toward police than a lot of folks do. Why do you, Where do you think that difference comes in? My mom. My brother, Mark, was a police officer. He was bombing arson for, for 27 years with St. Louis City before he retired out. And those boys – I have another brother who's a manager at a, at a Pepsi plant. So those those boys had a mom. They had we had a single mother. We had a grandmother, and they kept us on the straight and narrow. They made sure. I'm I'm pretty sure you remember growing up too. When the street lights had came on, you had to be you had home. Had to be home, right? <laughs> right? You had to be home. And my mother was waiting on the porch for all of her children to be home. She was strong willed. That that's what it is. She was a woman who had children. Nowadays, we have children, babies having babies, and they don't know, they don't have the skills or the capability to be parents. And, and it's sad. Case in point, Mark, my husband, who is a police officer locally, had a call, a uh, sick case call. The young lady answered the door and said her daughter was sick. He went into the back bedroom. This was a 12-year-old girl giving birth her mother was 22 wow and you know what she said and my husband said he took everything he had not to strangle her i'm going to be the best looking grandma in the club that uh (laughs) what do you what do you say this is what we have this is what we have in our society in our culture this is what we have we have children having children and not not having the tools and the fundamental tools and aspects to be adults when you have children that are having children the end result is high crime rate low education rate and they they don't know how to deal that is the problem that is the problem they have it in their mind that it is okay to live off the system it is okay to take from the government it is okay to holler no justice no peace when you are setting these children up to fail in the first place. That's powerful stuff, Peggy. And and I appreciate uh, you sharing some of your wisdom uh, with our listeners today. I have to tell you, I, I follow Peggy on, on Facebook and I, I really enjoy because you get this same sort of honest wisdom that she puts on her post, but some of them just crack me up. So Friday, and I don't have time to get into this today, so I'm going to have to have you on a different day to talk about this, but Friday you were talking about the transgender bathroom um, situation. Oh, started on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, you talked about the different things you identified with when it came to identify. <laughs> well, you identified with being a supermodel. You identified with having an American Express gold card. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was pretty funny. You identified yeah, with being an outlaw biker. He's standing up. Then it's a boy. <laughs> it's good stuff, and I appreciate it. And I, I encourage people to check out your Facebook page there at Peggy's Corner and see if she'll accept you and let you join the group. It's it's good stuff. Peggy, thank you. You're much welcome, Mark. Thank you. We will talk soon. Thank you. That is a that's Peggy Hubbard, and you you need to check out some of her writings. Just, I mean, you heard her answer there. That's a powerful, truthful answer from somebody who's been in the situation and understands what the root of the problem is and that's why i enjoy talking to her so much uh be sure to stick around with us coming up in the next hour we are going to talk to john henderson uh john has a law enforcement background a military background and he runs the range st louis west 
and he's certainly got some opinions on police training and whether or not there should be guns in the classrooms or at least in schools. We'll take your phone calls as well, 314-969-9797.